Hey guys, so this is going to be my Priceline haul. I went a little bit overboard. Priceline has a 40% off cosmetics sale biannually. And apart from a few brands that you can't buy at Priceline, I don't really buy any drugstore makeup outside of those sales. So when the sales come up, I tend to go a little bit crazy. Last year, they had it, I think, in November. And I didn't actually buy that much because there was a bit of a delay between the American release and the Australian release, which is normal. But Priceline essentially had nothing new in the last sale. So I didn't buy that much. So it's pretty much been a year since I've done a big drugstore buy up at Priceline. If you check out the down bar, I'll have a list of everything that I bought, the recommended retail price and links to the Priceline website if it is on there still. There is a lot of products here. If I had bought this at recommended retail, this probably would have come in around the $625 point. So 40% of that makes a massive difference. Most of it is uh, new products. There's only, I think, three repurchases but let's get into it first up is a repurchase this is the Maybelline Superstay 24-hour corrector in ivory It's fantastic for summer when I'm not wearing much makeup and I just want to cover up dark circles few spots on my face and just wearing powder so pretty much every single sale I will buy a new one and keep it in the drawer so I never run out Next up is a Revlon blush. This is um, number 6 Naughty Nude. I will admit the name got me at first. It is a natural flush shade. There's nothing extremely special about it, but I just liked it. But can I just say, Revlon, really? Like, you really think I'm going to use that? Why? As someone that does travel quite a bit, especially with makeup, why they insist on wasting my space with stupid things that I won't use and for some reason being a makeup addict I insist on keeping the brushes even if I will never ever use them. Next up we have two products from Physicians Formula. This is from their Nude Wear range which I haven't actually heard that much about the product but I have heard a lot about the packaging and I can see why I am a little bit obsessed with rose gold so rose gold bows I can admit I most likely bought this for the packaging and didn't actually try the product at the time. But from what I can see, it's a mosaic blush. It has nude wear written in it in silver writing, but I'm pretty sure that's an overspray. So we'll have to test that out and see how it goes. What I do like about both of these is it is a book style and the back opens, you have a mirror, but also these brushes. I actually like these brushes, unlike the Revlon one that is completely useless. Whilst I may not use this for its initial application, this is actually quite good for when you're out and about and want to touch up your blush. I also like these because you can actually contour with these and I have been known to take this style of brush out of the back of these products and use it with other ones. Okay, so eyes. I was actually lucky enough to pick up one of the Urban Decay Naked Vaults. So I have all the Naked palettes and I wanted to do a comparison between some drugstore knockoffs, dupes, whatever you want to call it. So this is the Models Prefer Shadows in Nude. I don't know if this comes in multiple colours. This looks very similar to... Hang on, can we do this without completely blinding you with the mirror? Um, this looks similar to the first um, Naked palette. Um, I will say this, just the shadows in here without even swatching them, they look very dry. They've actually pulled away from the pens. So I'm guessing it's going to have a bit of a chalky finish to it. Hopefully it's not too bad. I can give it a good try and it's not going to be one of those automatic just avoid. Because I didn't have one of these open in the store so I couldn't actually have a look at it. I picked this up in store. This is the Essence All About Nudes Eyeshadow. Um, 
just from swatching this, it looks quite good. It's a pretty average palette. You've got um, your light pink, silver, that kind of mushroomy silver colour, and a purple that would be dark enough to do like a cut crease. I actually have high hopes for this because the shades in this are very much what I would wear on a day-to-day. -day. The packaging, there's no excessive amounts of stuff that you don't need. It's got quite a hard case, so that will be good for traveling. So hopefully this works. Next up is Mono Eyeshadows from Essence. These, I got um, seven. I don't actually know how many are available. I just tried to stick to shades that I could actually see myself using. Even though they're cheap, there's no point wasting your money. I tried to get a range of textures so that I could give them a proper review. So 78 Vanilla Milkshake. This is a shimmer effect, but it looks like it's on the matte side. 77 Sandy Says Hello. This is a rose gold shade. I think I'm going to like it. That said, the overspray is definitely coming off already, just from swatching it, I think, twice. Um, number 6 Metropolitan. This is a sparkle effect. Definitely has some chunky glitter in it, I will say that. But I needed a darker shade for crease work. Um, next up, 35 Party All Night. This is metallic effect. Um, this is a more golden rose gold. Number two, Dance All Night. This is a sparkling effect. Again, a bit of chunky glitter going on. But I am seeing that that's starting to go away as I'm getting through the overspray. Um, number 70, Fox in a Box, Metallic Effect, again, a set. This doesn't have the chunky silver. This is more of a sheen. And finally, 74, Peach Beach. This is a pink metallic shade. But that again said, as I'm getting through the overspray, I'm not seeing the metallic side of it. It's definitely going back to a more matte version as I'm getting through that overspray. And the, well not the last thing from Essence, but the last eyeshadow is the Metal Glam eyeshadow. This is in O2 Coffee Glow. I think my pen, yeah, my pen's loose, so I've got to be careful with this one. This is very, very deceptive. It, on the top, look ridiculously shimmery, but as I'm getting through that overspray again, that glitter's going away and it is going back to, um that more coffee shade so these are going to need quite a bit of like testing out to see how far the overspray goes through what the product underneath is actually like to see if they're worth it okay so for the rest of eyes it's going to be eyeliners and mascaras disclaimer I am a massive Maybelline mascara fan I have that many new ones and backups and I probably have about 10 of them sitting in the drawer. So for this sale, instead of buying yet more Maybelline, I tried to step out of the box and try some different brands. That said, I think apart from one, these are all L'Oreal. So I just went to another brand. I didn't try and spread it out whatsoever. So, oh no, so two. Oh, so... The two that aren't L'Oreal, um, the Rimmel Wonderful Mascara with Argon Oil. I, first of all, got intrigued by the packaging. The colour definitely got me. I think I'm an advertiser's dream. Um, I also bought this when I saw that it had Argon Oil. One, I was intrigued to see if it actually does anything. Try and look after my lashes, try and grow them a bit more. So I wanted to see if that made any difference whatsoever. Um, and the other one was by Max Factor. This is the False Lash Effect 24 Hour. This is the one with the purple writing around it. I'm not sure if this is true or not. But I have been told that Max Factor mascaras and CoverGirl mascaras are exactly the same. Not just exact like close dupe sort of style but exactly the same same brush same formula everything and to be honest that looks like my lash blast mascara container so who knows we'll soon find out next is can't believe i'm saying this five l'oreal mascaras and next up is the l'oreal telescopic mascara now i'm 99 percent sure this is a repurchase 
So the one that I had was silver and when I was in store I couldn't see the silver one. So I'm not entirely sure if that is a repackaging thing or if there is actually different formulas. I hope not because I really liked this the last time I had it. Not on my top lashes but actually my bottom because I don't really like to volumize my bottom lashes. I just want them to look a little bit longer. So that's why I like this one. Um, next, this is meant to essentially give you those big baby doll eyes. Hopefully that works. I do quite like that appearance with my lashes. So I have high hopes for this one. The false lash butterfly wings mascara. I have just noticed that this says butterfly effect fibers. I'm not sure if I'm going to be liking that too much. I don't mind when you do it yourself when they've got like the two tubes or the double ended but I don't tend to like it when they're actually mixed into the mascara so hopefully that's not a terrible one. This one which is the Volume Million Lashes Excess Mascara. I'm pretty sure I've heard Fleur de Force talk about this at some stage and I remember her liking it but I can't be 100% sure that it was this one because there was another one that I think may have been in a purple tube. So I couldn't remember the colour. So I just took a gamble and went with that one. And then finally the Lash Architect 4D False Lash Effect. 4D? Fourth dimension? How does that work? Does that mean they're out of this world? Is that what it's saying? I don't know. Um... Yeah, there's not really much you can say about mascaras until you've tried them. These are not cheap. Now, this is talking recommended retail price, but this, I think, is the cheapest at $22. One of these is like $28. So you definitely don't want these to be messing up, especially when you can go to Sephora and even with their ridiculous prices, still get a Tarte, cameras, lights, flashes, something to that, the gold tube, mascara I think it was $36 so these aren't that far off if you're buying them normal price so you don't want them to be crap. So the last of eyes and then the rest of this is lips which is absolutely ridiculous when you see how much there actually is. Okay next up this is the Maybelline Master Precise Liquid Liner. If you have seen any of my looks on Instagram and I'm wearing winged eyeliner you can pretty much guarantee that it is this this, I'm going to say, is probably about the 10th one I have bought. Every single sale, if Maybelline is on sale, I pretty much buy one because I use them that much. Um, I've just had one go out in my March empties. If you haven't seen that, I'll link it down below. So next up is the Essence Super Fine Eyeliner Pen. Now, there is one that everyone raves about, but when I was in store, I couldn't actually remember which one it was. So I went with this because it has the brush that I tend to aim for which is a fine tip but also a fine overall pen because for those spaz days when I can't do my eyeliner I will sit it and kind of dot it along the line and then join it up. So I went with that one. Okay, the final two are both from L'Oreal. They are both super liners, but one is a perfect slim liquid liner. Again, that same style of thin brush that I like. And the other one was something a bit different for me, and this is the Super Liner Gelmatic. So it's a mechanical pen, but it's like a gel formula, which I... I'm going to be real with you, I suck at doing gel eyeliner, just cannot for the life of me get it right. So if this works, I will be very happy. Now lip products. I went a little bit overboard, just a little bit. There is like 18 products that I bought for my lips. Why I ever thought that I needed that much, I don't know. Up until a few years ago, um, I had like two lipsticks and that was it. I had all the makeup in the world but lip products just weren't doing it for me. And then all of a sudden that turned around and now I have like four drawers. 
Okay, so first up we have Maybelline. This is their new Color Drama Intense Velvet Lip Pencils. Okay, so this is the one that I'm actually wearing. This is 140 Minimalist. I didn't like this as much as I thought I was going to. Now, I haven't tried the other shades, so I don't know if that's a cross-the-board thing. It kind of just felt like I was using a lip pencil to fill in my lips. There was nothing special. It wasn't particularly creamy. That may just be this shade. I haven't tried the others. I have um, 110 Pink So Chic, which is that really dark uh, raspberry shade that I tend to go for. Um, 630 Nude Perfectionist, which is just your classic brownish nude. This is 510 Red Essential, so that blue-red, I'll have to test it out and see if the others are the same. But essentially it is a giant lip pencil. It is not a lip cream or anything like that. It's not, it doesn't have the same texture that my kind of chubby stick lip products do. Okay, um, this was the only one that I got a single product of. This is a tryout before I buy heaps of them. This is Bourjois Rouge, Rouge Edition in 18. This doesn't actually have the colour name on it, but I'll list it in the down bar. Th this, this is a Jessica shade, without a doubt. Based on the reviews that I have seen on blogs and on YouTube, I have very, very high hopes for this. I really hope that it does look good. Next up are Rimmel Apocalypse. Now, these are the Lip Velvet Matte Edition. Now, I will say I have extremely high hopes for these because I love the Apocalypse Lip Lacquers. I have all of them. And when I say all of them, I don't just mean the ones that are available in Australia. I also mean the ones that are only available in England because there were ones that were released in either place that weren't released worldwide. So I have literally all of them. I love them. They are fantastic. As far as I know, there's only four shades in this range. I didn't buy all four just because the four shade was a bit too out there. It was an orange shade, which I only tend to wear if I'm doing photography style makeup. It isn't exactly a day-to-day -day lip color. The color range... I think they did okay with the colour range with what they released. They did kind of the nude, the more berry shade, the red, and then the orange. So they have your basics covered. You've got 206 Atomic Rose, which is your nude shade. What I really like is in this edition, they have kept the wand that they used in the lip lacquers. It's kind of got a curved out um, doe foot applicator which means that you don't have to keep going back to the tube to scoop more out to put on your lips. Next you've got 505 Burning Lava. This is like your true fire engine red, which again, yes. 307 Meteoric uh, Matte. This is a dark um, berry shade. I really, really hope that these stand up and have got the same quality that the lip lacquers do. If you've seen my vlog, you know that I love the Australis Velour Lips. Um, I will link the blog post for the first 10 shades. Finish collecting the newest ones. First up are the three Australis AC Loves Me Metallic Edition Velour Lips. Um, there's three shades. The nudest one is Nude Fighter. Then you've got a darker brown shimmer which is re rewindy and then you've got a ready coppery shade which is grand master pash i'm pretty sure that grand master pash was the one that i was wearing in my get ready with me that i posted the other day so i'll leave a link to that if you want to see me wearing it and then we have the new five shades that were just released you've got roma a nice corally pink shade. You've got a nice watermelon shade, which has my attention already, which is Barcelona. Okay, so next we have Budapest, which is a dark red, but it's not a berry dark red. Uh, Dubai, which is your dark berry shade. And then we've got um, Shanghai, which is that nice 
bright uh, raspberry pink. We have probably some of the most talked about Australian released lip products. These have been compared to the Velour Lips, but they are in the next price point down. You've got the Savvy by DB Ultra Matte Lip Colors and the High Shine Lip Lacquers. Between the two of them, they've very much got the color range covered. The lip lacquers tend to be, apart from the bright orange shade, do tend to have the more wearable shades covered. You've only got this bright orange, which is very, very bright nude versions of a red, a watermelon shade, the pink, and then your traditional nude shade. Then you've got the ultra mattes. These tend to be much brighter and I wouldn't say that these are wearable shades, maybe two of them. The brown is very, very brown. The, the orangey nude is very orange. And the rest are very, very strong colours. I think they may have missed their mark with spreading the colours across the range. Because if you're looking for a wearable shade in a matte cream, you're not going to get it. If you want a bright one in the lip lacquers, you're only going to get that in the orange. I think that's the end of this video. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like, share and subscribe. There will be more videos coming. They have been recorded, but my lack of editing skills is holding up the process a bit. If you have any requests, throw them down in the comments section. I'll try to get to them as soon as possible. Don't forget to check out the description bar. It has what I'm wearing, including the makeup that I'm wearing today. It also has all my social media listed. So come say hi, check out my blog. I love you guys and I'll see you next time. Bye!